and we'll move on to the Rookie of the Year award. Another award that has had uh, a late push for a guy at number two with Jalen Williams. Of course, Paolo Banchero has been the front runner for the award for the majority of the season. Of course, Ben Matherin was also in the conversation earlier on uh, before his scoring started to taper off with the Pacers. Uh, but we'll start with you, Gabe. Who is your pick for Rookie of the Year this season? I feel like I'm having deja vu right now, man, because what did I just say the last time that I was speaking? Every year we try to do this thing where we make it dramatic, we got to spice it up, and we got to add that other guy in there to try and make it a conversation, make it close. Jalen Williams has been great. J-Dub has been great. This Thunder team has come alive. I don't know if they'll end up getting into the playoffs, but they've been competitive. And for the place they're at, for how young they are, for how young their rebuild still is, great place to be. And he's been a really big part of that. But nobody was talking about him until February. It's been one guy all season, and that's been the guy who we all expected, and that's Paolo. He's come in. He's shown he's the franchise guy for this Magic team. He's a guy that they're going to build around moving forward. And he's just – he's he's been him from the from day one, from game one to well, – I mean, I guess now we're at, what, game 78, and he'll do that through game 82. He's been very impressive. The only thing that I'd like to see is that three ball come up a little bit, you know, probably the worst three-point shooter in basketball this season statistically. But, uh, hey, man – Everything besides that, and I do think there is room for growth there. He's been everything that he was supposed to be. And because of that, he earned the award that we all predicted him to get. And the Magic have been playing very good basketball, like really since like Markel Fultz came back. And Paolo's like early on in the, like the first two, two and a half months, he was averaging around 22 points a game. Like he was very good. He had that slow month of February, which is when J-Dub started to pick up. But they were real like – maybe small considerations like you might just look at his numbers like could he be an all-star maybe this year maybe as a rookie not really but you know his numbers were so good that it's like maybe he could make a push you never know but obviously he did taper off a little bit but he's still averaging over 20 points a game and i don't think like anybody else should get serious consideration because paolo has been this guy from day one where everybody else is playing catch up i mean in the offseason we all had paolo i think everybody in their right mind had paolo as their rookie of the year I mean, he, he's been so good. Um, he's shown all the makers of being a franchise guy. Um, I think it's, he's very clearly the rookie of the year. Shout out to J-Dub for hooping. Shout out to Ben Matherin for his hot start. And for other guys that have had really good rookie years as well. But I think Paolo is clear in the way to rookie of the year. Yeah, I would agree with both of you. Like we mentioned with Brogdon and quickly, Paolo's just had the best overall season uh, from the start of the year to now. And... He's been what he was expected to be coming in as the number one overall pick as the guy who was a consensus expected number one overall pick uh, for us heading into the draft. And he's performed to those expectations. And like you mentioned, Orlando have been good this year. They're not going to be in the play in like OKC looks like they're going to be, but they're only a few wins behind them in the win column. They've been a much improved team and Paolo has been a big part of that. The biggest stickling point people like to talk about is the efficiency but I mean, Powell's a number one guy and Jalen Williams is like a number three or a number four at best. And no disrespect to Markel Fultz, but he has Shea and Josh Giddy giving him the ball. And he's got some good facilitators to get him involved in the offense. And he's not creating a shot anywhere near as much as Paolo is. So there's some considerations there that are going to obviously affect Paolo's efficiency. You could talk about the three point shooting. But from his overall impact and how much he's had to shoulder a lot of the load of this Magic offense this year as a rookie, I don't see how he can't be uh, the number one guy for the majority of people, at least, for Rookie of the Year this season. Yeah, and it's like, like you said, like he has Shea and Josh Giddy. It goes Markel and then Paolo's like the next best guy that is like distributing the ball. And that's the number one option as well. And he's come in. You know, as a rookie, I don't care what your efficiency numbers is. He's shown that he can average 20 points per game in the NBA on, like, a team that's performed above expectations. And I think that's very impressive in its own right. 